I'll start with verses 1 and 2, skip down to verses 8 through 10, and conclude with 18 through 20. Amen. When you have it, say amen. 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 And this is what David writes. He says, I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and I will praise your name forever and ever. Let's jump down to verses 8, uh, 8 through 10. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. Jump down to verses 18 through 20. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. To all who call upon him in truth, he will fulfill the, the, the desire of those who fear him. He also will hear their, cor their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to preach just for a few minutes on the topic uh, a joyful conversation, a joyful conversation. Over the past several weeks, we have been introducing uh, and preaching about this idea of prayer. Uh, prayer, as we have defined it, is basically a conversation with God. Prayer, as we have talked about it, uh, is essential to the life of the believer. And as a matter of fact, uh, our relationship uh, is depicted in how often and how much we pray. As a matter of fact, one cannot be an authentic and true follower of Jesus Christ if one does not have a prayer life. Because there can, ever, there can never be a good relationship where there is no conversation. In other words, as we have defined prayer being the conversation with God, if I don't conversate with God, I don't have a relationship with him. In other words, that no matter how much I come to church, if I come to church, hear word, but yet don't go home and apply what I have heard and pray my way through, then I cannot have a strong relationship. Uh, I cannot have a relationship with God if all I do is shout about knowing about him, but never really know him. Uh, if, if I clap my hands and sing in the choir, but yet uh, I don't pray and conversate with God and allow him to conversate with me, then my relationship is not strong. As a matter of fact, I wish I could just talk to people in here who've ever been in a relationship, how you wanted somebody to talk to you and you wanted somebody to conversate with you and the depth of your relationship is measured and effective and, me and, and actually works by conversation. As a matter of fact, you don't want to be with anybody who does not conversate well. As a matter of fact, they can look real good on the outside, but as soon as they open their mouth and have nothing to say, it can turn you off. I would, can I park there for a second because there are two or three people in here you look back over your life for a quick second and they looked good, smelled good, walked good, had money, but yet they couldn't talk a good game and yet it turns you all the way off, which suggests to us that the strength of a relationship is based on the depth of your conversation. Where there is no good conversation, there is no good relationship. That's why it don't matter who shouts in church, do you talk to God and does God talk back to you? Doesn't matter what you've been through or how many mistakes you've made, do you have a relationship with God and does that relationship allow you to open doors when nobody else can, can, can close them? Does that relationship allow you, even though you don't have a friend, you got a friend in Jesus? Can I talk to anybody this morning? Is there anybody in here that can testify that I'm here because I got good relationship? I may not have done everything right in my life, but at least I got good relationship. Listen, I may not have been perfect, but at least I got good relationship. I'm so glad today that when we talk about prayer, we are talking about conversation with God. And so we have been looking at our text. We've been looking at our text. We've been looking at the life of David. And what we've learned in, in prayer, Miss TC, is that prayer does not mean you got to stay on your knees for an hour talking to God for it to be effective prayer. As a matter of fact, there are many people that teach about prayer and you think that you have to be perfect in order to pray. But the, the text clearly suggests to us, as we've looked at the life of David, that David was an imperfect man, but yet he had an active prayer life, which means you don't have to wait to get your life 
right before you pray. In other words, you can pray while you're trying to get it right because God wants to hear all about what you're going through. Can I talk to anybody in here? Don't you let the devil put, put a rain on your parade and make you feel like you, because you're not good enough that you can't talk to God. God specializes in dealing with people that, that nobody else talks to. As a matter of fact, some of you are in here because nobody else would fool with you, but God had his hand on you. Some of you all are here because when people turn their backs on you, God never did. Don't you sit here and act like you are that holy and you are that perfect, like you got it going on, like you deserve to be here. I want to talk to two or three people up in here that know you're one thought, one word, one feeling, one smell, one taste, one smoke, one drink, one walk, one bed, one place from where you used to be. But if it had not been for the grace of God on your side, if it had not have been for your conversation with God, you would have fell off the edge a long time ago. But I'm kept by the power of God. David had some conversations with God. Matter of fact, it ain't nothing wrong with talking to God. Matter of fact, you better tell Jesus all about your troubles. Matter of fact, I'm glad that he's a burden bearer and you can put all your problems on him because he's big enough God, he can handle it. Can I get a witness in here? Yes, David, David. We learned in David, David, that David did not have the, uh, he, he didn't go through the prescriptions of prayer. In other words, he didn't go through all the things that we are often associated with prayer. David just was real with God. And one of the things we learned in our sermon series is that one, you can have urgent conversations with God. In other words, you don't have to wait till you get to church to start talking to God. Matter of fact, there are some times in your life, Graylin, when things come up when you ain't got time to get to church. Yeah, you, you, you need to have a, a direct line to God. Miss Connie, you got to have you an urgent line. You don't need a party line when nobody can eavesdrop on your prayer request. No, some of y'all new school folk don't know nothing about that. But some of you old school folks, I just gave you a chance to clap. Because when you used to pick up the phone and you just try to dial a number, you got other folk conversation. But can I talk to anybody up in here that can testify that God has a secure line. God has a line that won't nobody know your business. You won't see it out in the street. You won't see it on Facebook. You won't see no text messages about it. No. Uh, God got a secure line where you can tell him all that you're going through and ain't got to worry about hearing it in the street. Ain't got to worry about nobody treating you funny, looking at you crazy or missed. Can I talk to anybody in here that have ever had to dial him up on a secure line? Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. So we learn that you that you got you can have urgent conversation, which means that you can have it anytime, anywhere, for anything. Then the next thing we learn is that you got to have honest conversation. Yeah, you got to have honest conversation. Honest conversation is when you can go to God and tell him exactly how you feel and you ain't got to dress it up. You ain't got to sound theological. You don't even have to sound biblical. You can talk to God about what you're dealing with. I know some of y'all cute saints up in here. Y'all don't know nothing about that. But sometimes I'm not feeling it. And sometimes my want to don't want to. And sometimes I'm about to go over the edge. And sometimes I need a God that's strong enough to pull me back. I need a God that I can talk to and don't judge me about what what I'm about to say to him when folk get on my last nerves and folk are tripping and folk are mean mugging. I need to talk to God honestly how I want to walk out and don't come back. Throw up my hands and not even crack up. Can I talk to anybody in here that have ever felt like I'm saved but I got some issues? I'm saved but I, I need to talk to somebody and I don't need to hear my business nowhere else. I need to have an honest conversation. And so you got to talk to God honestly. In other words, if you want to have an honest conversation with God, you got to first be honest with yourself. You, you got to be able to understand where you really are. Yes, you are not as holy as you think you are. You are not as saved as you think you are because you let life start throwing you some curveballs. You let some stuff start happening and all the Jesus you think you got will go right out the window. Can I talk to somebody in here that can testify that God, I need to talk to you honestly because listen, I can't hold this no more. I can't hold this in no more. I, I can't walk like this no more. I can't deal with them no more. And if you don't step in right now, I'm about to lose my mind 
shine and pop off and I'm not going to make you look good. So God, I need you right now, right here, right, I don't, I, listen, why are you seeing about other folk? I need you to come see about me. High five your neighbor and say honest conversation. I didn't mean to get so ethnic and urban today, but I'm feeling it this morning. <laughs> then the third thing we talked about in our sermon series, and this is unconventional prayer because some of y'all have been so messed up because you think you don't know how to pray, but you, you just need to talk to God. You need to talk to God, listen, very urgently and very honestly. And let me give you the third one we preached about last week. You got to learn how to sometimes have angry conversations. <laughs> Ooh, I wish I had some people who've ever been mad. Ooh, I can't say we got too many bills. I can't say it like I would do it any other time. But you, 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 you know when you mad, not just at somebody else, but you even mad at God. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we looked at, yeah. Come on, don't y'all look at me like that. Come on, can I get some honest people in the house today? I have been mad even at God. Because of, I haven't been pleased with how things have turned out. Uh, life has played a deck of cards that I didn't want to play. But you got to learn how to sometimes even have your angry conversations with God. Because God ain't tripping about your anger. Because God is big enough to change you in the midst of your anger. Can I talk about it? David was praying to, his, to God about some enemies because everybody got enemies. And, they, and all your enemies ain't a person. Some of your enemies are some things. Yeah, some of your enemies are in a me. Yes, it, it ain't always your neighbor that got the problem. Because when you really add it up, you the only common denominator in everything you've been through. As a matter of fact, you just need to go to the bathroom and look at yourself in the mirror. Because if you can ever get beside yourself, you realize you ain't all you cracked up to be. But you tell you the truth, you can get you some help. <laughs> High five your neighbor say, help us, Lord, help us, Lord, help us, Lord. <laughs> and so you got to have angry conversation. And when, what we learned in that particular sermon uh, is that even though God may not change your situation, God will take your cussing and turn your cussing into blessing. Can I talk about it? God may not change your situation, but he will change you in the midst of your situation. Some of y'all can testify to that. Don't y'all act all flaky with me. You done shouted every song the choir sing. I'm giving you some stuff to really hang your hat on. Because some of y'all, you looking for somebody to change. You looking for your baby daddy to change. You looking for your hood. You looking for your wife to change. You looking for your co-workers to change. But sometimes God don't want to change them. God really want to change you. angry conversation but you know not everything got to be urgent not everything has to be honest like that uh, not everything got to be angry sometimes you just need to have some joyful conversation have you ever had anybody call you on the phone and uh, text message you and every time you hear from them they always want something Oh, I, I hit the right crowd today. Eight o'clock didn't have nobody like that, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, let me go ahead and make my case then. You know how it is. You, you love them dearly, you know. You, you don't like them all the time, but you still love them. Uh, but you wish that they would just call you for more than asking for stuff. Uh, I, I, I don't know. No, every time you call me, you just want to ask me for something. Do you ever just think about me and just think about just to encourage me? You always calling and you want me to give you a word of encouragement, but you don't never give me no word of encouragement back. You always asking me to do something for you, but when I ask you to do something for me, you always too busy. Anybody know anybody like that? It gets to the point in your life where every time you see them come up on your cell phone call ID, you be like, golly, click up. You've been forwarded to voicemail. <laughs> 
and then and then they got the unmitigated gall that when you forward them to voicemail like you always are waiting on them to call you they got the unmitigated gall to call you right back as if it was a mistake that they went that they went to voicemail in the first place you know anybody like that Oh, always asking for something. Just don't never call to say, hey, how you doing? I was thinking about you today. I just want to do something nice for you just because of all the stuff you've done for me. You, I, this just don't never call nothing like that. But, but just always call asking for something. Oh, yeah. I know y'all done already thought about your neighbor, <laughs> thought about your cousin, thought about your sister or your brother. But... But what is it when it's really you? <laughs> don't never pray unless you're asking for God for something. Uh-uh, don't y'all do that? Uh-uh, don't y'all get quiet? Uh-uh, 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 pull your toes back. I'm coming down to everybody aisle up in here. Ah, uh, uh, it just can't never just call God up just because he is. God, I need you. God, I want you. God, can you? God, give me. God, everything is God doing something for you. And you asking God to move on your back. Oh, don't y'all get quiet on me up in here. Because some of y'all came to church asking God for something. I ain't trying to beat you up. I'm just trying to talk about what I'm talking about. I'm trying to get you to have a joyful conversation. Because don't nobody want to talk to nobody that's always asking for something. Sometimes I just want to know, do you just love me just because? If I never did anything else for you, are, are, are you satisfied just because we love each other? If I ain't never bought you no ring, ever bought you no car, ever, ever did anything, took you on no trips, do you just love me because I love you? Oh, now y'all want to get all sophisticated and spiritually dignified now. No, because many of us, all we do is ask God for stuff, but don't ever just talk to him just because. All right, so in the 12 minutes I have left, I'm going to teach us, I know Miss Sandy, pray for me here. Uh, I'm going to teach us how to have a joyful conversation. David, in this particular text, he has given his frustrations to God. He's, he's prayed to God in his anger. He's been honest with God about how he feels. But towards, the, towards this particular psalm, in the end of this collection of psalms, David is just praying just to be praying. He's not asking God for nothing. He's just blessing God just because he's God. And it's something when you, are, when you have such a relationship where you're not just looking for things, you're just satisfied with his presence. I know that's hard for many people to grasp and to grapple because really we think God is just a cosmic Santa Claus or, 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 or a universal genie. And we think that when we rub him the right way or shout the right way, he going to give us what we want. Or if we cry enough tears or we get mad enough, God will just bless us just in spite of. But can I tell you that God is not that kind of God? God is always looking for a relationship with us. And there can never be good relationship without good conversation. So let's look at the text for the next 10 minutes just to see what David says in this particular text. In verses 1 and 2, he says, I will extol you, my God, O King. I will bless your name forever and ever and every day. I will bless you and I will praise your name forever and ever. It's interesting that David starts out his prayer not asking for nothing. He just says, you know what, God, I'm just going to praise you. I, I'm, I'm not asking you for nothing. I'm just, I just want to speak well of you. I want to tell you just how good I think you are and I know you are. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't want you to give me no food. I don't want you to pay no bill. I don't want you to bring me a man. I'm not trying to get rid of no woman. No, I, I just want to just open my mouth and I just want to tell you how good 
what you been to me. Y'all missed it right there. Because listen, some of y'all, when I talked, you should have thought back over your life of how good God has really been to you. So let me go ahead and rewind that again and let me start that again. I, I don't want nothing. I, I'm not asking you for anything. You don't have to pay a bill. You don't have to, you, you don't have to make my baby daddy act right. You don't have to do any of that. God, I just want to come to you just because you are who you are. I, I, God, if you ain't never done nothing else for me, you, you've already done enough. Because when I, when I thought I was going to lose my mind, Lord, you kept my mind together and you were a mind regulator. In other words, when my mind went wayward and my thoughts were crazy, God, you kept me sane when other folk thought I was crazy. Father, I thank you just because you are who you are. Can I help you understand it in the text? He says, I will extol you, God. In other words, he says, I will exalt you. The word exalt means to enlarge, Minister Johnson. It means to make bigger than who I am. Now, the significance of this is, is that David is already a king, which means in earthly terms, you don't get much bigger than David, which means that what David was saying, he says, I'm not too big to pray. Y'all missed it. I, I got money, but I, I, I know where my help comes from. I, I, I got status, but I know where my help comes from. I got family, but I know where my help comes from. And the problem with us is some of us get too big to pray because when God brings you through, then you ain't got nothing to do with God. But can I talk to anybody in here who know that I ain't nothing without God? I can't preach without God. You can't sing without God. You can't pray without God. You can't stand without God. You can't be healthy without God. You can't have peace without God. You have no joy without God. You have no sense without God. You have no help without God. You have no meaning without God. Can I talk to anybody in here? I got money, but there ain't nothing. I got status, but I ain't got nothing. I got degrees, but I ain't got nothing because I'm nothing without God. I ain't nothing without God. And what David was saying, he says, he says, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm exalt your name. He said, because you bigger than every problem. You bigger than every circumstance. You bigger than my mama. You bigger than my dad. You bigger than my issues. You bigger than my children. In other words, I, there's nothing big. I, I, know I'm, I know I'm the head person in charge. But even, even that, listen, God, you bigger than me. And so even though people respect me, listen, I give all credit to you. Come here, y'all don't know what, you don't even know when to shout. Because the reason why some of us don't never move into a good, joyful conversation with God is because you're still trying to be bigger than God. Now, I can't hang here on point number one all day here, but my soul done got happy. He says, I'm going to bless your name. Now, the word name in the Hebrew means reputation or good standing. He says, every day I'm going to bless you. Every day I'm going to praise your reputation and your standing. y'all I'm trying to teach it he says every day I'm going to praise you and the word praise comes from the Hebrew word, word, Hebrew word Barak which means to speak well of it means I'm not going to be quiet I'm going to talk about your reputation and your standing oh, Lord Jesus he says every day I'm going to open my mouth and no matter what I'm going through I'm going to declare I'm going to exalt you to put you bigger than me and to make sure I talk about your reputation and your standing. In other words, he says, I look back over what you've already done and I realize that your reputation is bigger than my reputation and I have nothing that's worthy to be talked about so this prayer don't need to be having nothing about me but it all needs to be focused on you. I wish I had two or three people who could just look back over their life and know that God's reputation is bigger. 
God, listen, I, I, look, God, God has a big reputation. Listen, don't none of us compare to the fact of the God who created heaven and earth, who allowed the stars to be hung in their dark starry sockets and the sun to be centered and around the universe and for everything to be centered around the sun. That's a wise God because even in your life on earth, everything is centered around the sun. Just as in the cosmos, so in, in the natural realm, everything is centered around the sun. And because everything is centered around the sun, the J-E-S-U-S, not the S-U-N, I'm talking about the S-O-N. It says everything is centered around the sun, God. You have a bigger reputation than I could ever imagine. Lord, I'm going to speak your reputation and not my own. Man, let me help you out. So how can I get my joy back, man? How can I get some folk to smile in church and to know who he is? How can I get folk to come in here and not have to be proud and big to know who the God that, that saved them is? The first thing I want to do is I want to give you this point. You got to put praise in your prayer. If the only thing you do is asking God something in your prayer, you ain't going to never have no good joy. Because some of the joy is, is just, just because he's God. I just tell him who he is. But let me go ahead and help you. Come on, Shan. Let me help you down the text. In verses 8 through 10, he says, Minister Metris, he says, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He says he's slow to anger and great in mercy. But then in verse 9, he says, he says, the Lord is good to everybody, to all. And his mercies are over all his works. He said, this is the reason why, in verse 10, that all your works should praise you. In other words, if God has been working on you, if he's been working in you, then you ought to be opening your mouth to speak well of the God who's been working. I'm in the text. I'm in the text. But if that don't move you, he says in verse 8, he says, my God is gracious and full of compassion. And he's slow to anger and he's great in mercy. Now some of us who've ever been trapped in sin, some of us who have ever been out of our minds, some of us should at least say thank you right there. Because the reality is, we didn't get what we deserved. But what we received is what we did not deserve. I wish I had some help up in here. Even on our best day, we don't deserve God's love. But I'm glad that I got a God who ain't quick to get mad at me when I fall off. I don't know about you, when, when, when I was weak and I, and, and, I, and I went some places I shouldn't have gone, I'm glad I got a God that will cover me and not get mad at me, but fix me up and put me back where I need to be and not tell nobody where I should have been. Slow to anger. Saved, but wasn't acting saintly. I'm glad he's slow to anger. Yes, Ooh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I didn't get no whooping for every time I did something wrong. I figured that would resonate for some of y'all. Uh-huh. Because some of the stuff. Uh-huh. I don't, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, I speak like that because I know where I came from. And, and my mama believed in tearing up that roar behind. But even out of all the whoopings I got by my mama, she didn't whoop me every time I deserved it. Because sometimes she just had mercy on me. She said, I, I love him so much, I don't really want to hurt him that bad. So let me talk to him this time and not whoop him this time. Come here. 
Some of y'all don't even know when to, when to rethink for the God because out of all the things that we've done that we should have been whooped on, some of the stuff that should have killed us, but God had mercy on us. He was slow to anger and gave us compassion. Some of the stuff that should have killed us, we're still living and we made it through. God is a good God, I tell you. He's a God that's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the stain. His name is worthy to be praised. I'm not concerned about my reputation. You can look at me crazy if you want to, but you didn't do what the Lord has done for me. You didn't save me like the Lord has saved me. You didn't help me like the Lord has helped me. Have I got a witness in here? I ain't trying to impress nobody. Uh-uh, because now I can shout all by myself. Because can't nobody do me like Jesus. I know I didn't try. I know I didn't look high. And I know I didn't look low, but I couldn't find nobody. Have I got a witness in here? Is there anybody in here that can testify that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you know that you don't know where you would be? Have I got a witness in here? The second point I want to give you is this, is that if you want to have joy in your prayer life, you got to take the focus off yourself and put the focus on God. Oh, I'm about to wrap it up because my soul done got happy. When I look at verses 18 through 20, David then says, he said, the reason why I praise God is not just because he made the sun and the moon. I don't praise him just because he pulled me out of the pasture and put me in the palace. No, I praise him because he saved me when I didn't deserve to be saved. And that's the reason why we ought to have joy in the church. You ought not let the devil steal your joy. Can't no husband steal your joy. Can't no wife steal your joy. Can't no children steal your joy. Can't no sickness steal your joy. Can't no church folks steal your joy. Can't no job steal your joy. Can't no school steal your joy. Can't nothing take my joy because my God saved me. Can I get a witness in here? Is there anybody in here who was sinking deep in sin? Far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained with him, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. I praise him because he loves me. I praise him because he forgave me. I praise him because he sanctified me. I praise him because he redeemed me. I praise him because he provides for me. I praise him because he made a way for me. I praise him because he healed me. I praise him because he restored me. I praise him because when my enemies came against me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. I praise him because he made my haters my elevators. I praise him because he woke me up this morning. I praise him because he started me on my way. I praise him because I got two eyes to see. I got lips to talk and legs to stand. I got a hand to wave. How I got a witness in here? That's why I see all hell could be breaking loose. But can't nobody steal my joy out of all that I've been through, out of the hell I've been through. I still got joy. Bills are due. Don't know where the money coming from, but I still got my joy. Body rock with pain, but I still got my joy. Listen, I know that there's some folk that can't stand me, but I don't care because I still got my joy. Have I got a witness in here? He opened doors for me. He provides for me. Do you know who he is? Can you shout and praise him because he saved you? Do you know who he is? Do you know him? They call him Joseph's boy. Mary's baby, the lily of the valley. But I just call him my savior. He's my alpha and my omega. He's my first and my last. I sing because I'm happy. And I show no sing because I'm free. His eye is on the spell. And I know he watches over me. He is my help. That's why I praise him. Because when I was sinking deep in sin, 
He sent a helper in the person of Jesus who 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary walked up God got this here took on the wretched flesh of my life they nailed him to a cross he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour he died one Friday night do you know it he died one Friday night and laid down all night Saturday that's why I can't stop preaching that's why I can't stop praising but that's not how the story ends cause early Sunday morning early Sunday morning early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands that's why he walks with me and talks with me and tells me that I am his own what a friend we have in Jesus all my sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry all my burdens to the Lord in prayer have I got a witness won't he make a way for him won't he talk to you won't he restore your joy won't he restore your peace do I have a witness say yes yes I know he'll do it yes he will I know he'll make a way yes he will do I have anybody here that has come through the fire have been through the flood but God has made a way have I got a witness in here won't he do it and he alright and he alright and he alright yes he is say yes 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 I know my God will do it yes he will yes he will